Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all fly the flag this weekend. That is what's written on a sign placed in the yard of the neighborhood behind us. And I would bet that many of you are doing just that this weekend, proudly flying the U.S. flag. There's another one of our neighbors that puts flags in front of all the houses in in our cul-de-sac, and she was in the process of doing that just as I was typing this up this mor- uh, for this morning. Not this morning, Bill. For this morning. Flying the nation's flag is a way to express our pride in our nation and our thanks for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. So I'd ask you to pray with me now, if you would. Dear Lord, our gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, On this Declaration of Independence Day weekend, we pray that you would lead us to truly appreciate the freedoms that we have in our country, that we may see our freedom as a gift from you. Help us never to take our freedom for granted. May we also learn to appreciate and love the freedom Christ has provided for us in the forgiveness of sins. May we proudly display that freedom in our lives also. Lord, be with us now as we worship you and give you praise. May your word touch the hearts of your children everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those who may be listening to the sermon over the internet, our readings for today, Zechariah. Chapter 9, verses 9 to 12 is the Old Testament reading. The epistle reading is Romans 7, 14 to 25. And our gospel reading, Matthew 11, verses 25 to 30. And that Matthew lesson from uh, Matthew reading from chapter 11 will serve as the sermon text for today. And that reading begins, if you'll notice, with Jesus in prayer to the Father. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. These things that are hidden from wise from the wise and the understanding, refer to God's plan of salvation. God's plan does not depend on human wisdom and understanding. Another thing for which we can be thankful today, especially considering the diverse opinions regarding our current situation in the country today, As 1 Corinthians says, those considered to be wise by earthly standards often consider the message of the cross to be foolishness. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. His plan is revealed to those who are called to be his children and who heed his call to repentance. Jesus thanked his father for revealing the truth of the gospel to those chosen to follow him rather than depending upon the knowledge of salvation being dependent on human wisdom. And Jesus refers to his followers as these little ones those who believe in Jesus with that simple childlike faith. Because of that childlike faith in something that many people see as foolish, sometimes Christianity is referred to as a religion for the weak. And indeed, Jesus states this when he says in Luke 19, for the Son of Man has came not to seek 
But the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And in Mark 2.17, those who are well do not have need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. And in our reading for today, he calls to those who are burdened and heavy laden. Some of you may have heard me refer at times to a person's come to Jesus moment. And recently someone asked me, how do you know when you need a come to Jesus moment? When you are burdened and have heavy laden. When you have been crushed by your guilt and ground into pieces. When you have been weighted down with that worry and anxiety and terrors of sin and death. That's when Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest for your soul. And being contrite is that first step towards reconciliation with God. Coming to Jesus with that humble and contrite heart, acknowledging our sinfulness, our helplessness in a situation, and our need of a Savior. People commonly experience disappointment because of unfulfilled and often false expectations. People become disappointed in God because they expect God is going to act in a certain way. But he does not. We Christians also often expect God to act in a certain way, and when he doesn't, we wonder why. And yeah, that can be discouraging. It doesn't always occur to us that perhaps God would have us act in a certain way. To guard against those false and unfulfilled expectations, we are to look outside of ourselves, look outside of others who are more wise or understanding, look outside of those things or even those ideas of the world and focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on what he has done and focus on what he has said. For Christ is the fulfillment of all our hopes. All the promises of God are fulfilled in him, in his yes. So what does he say to us today? All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But what sort of rest does he give us? Is it the rest that we get with a day off from work? Or from taking a vacation? Well, that may help. Except if you've been off work far too long. Or your vacation plans had to be canceled. But is this the sort of rest that Jesus is talking about? Is this what Jesus promises to give to those who labor and are heavy laden? I don't think so. He isn't speaking about a rest where you can take a day off, put up your feet, and just relax for a while. You don't need Jesus to take some time for yourself. So what kind of rest is Jesus offering to us? Read once again to whom Jesus offers his rest. Now we understand the labor part because everybody has work to do of some sort. Everyone labors in some way. But Jesus promises to give rest to those who, are, who labor and are heavy laden. The rest that Jesus promises to give, he promised to those who are burdened in their conscience. 
to know the labor of work that the law of God demands of you, and at the same time to know that you have been unable to do it. When God's law is made known to you, our sin becomes more evident, and it weighs on our conscience. Take Paul, for example, in our epistle reading for today. Paul says, for we know that the law is spiritual, it's divine, it comes from God, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin, and I know that nothing good dwells in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. I want to do good, but that evil is always close at hand. I do not want what I do not want is what I keep on doing. And Paul detests his own continuing sinfulness. Wretched man that I am, he says about himself. Who will deliver me from this body of death? And that's a troubled conscience. That is a man who has labored and is heavy laden. That's the Apostle Paul who wrote a good portion of the New Testament, burdened by his ongoing sin of the flesh. That's a man experiencing the need to come to Jesus. People today are burdened. Anger seems to be everywhere, doesn't it? People on edge all across the country. During this July 4th of July weekend of the land of the free and the home of the brave, there are a lot of people carrying a heavy burden. Many people are weary and troubled, distressed, heavy laden. Is there anyone here this morning like that? Worried, burdened, distressed, downcast, disillusioned, asking that question, who will deliver me? Do you have a good place to rest today? During the shelter at home pandemic, have you had a good place to rest? A place that is free from anxiety and worry and distress and stress? If you have been home long enough or too long, or if you've turned on the news recently, then probably not. If that's the case, then on this Sunday of Independence Day weekend, let us once again focus on the true spiritual freedom that comes from coming to Jesus. Because these are the things that are trying to rob us of our freedom today. With all that you hear and see out there, it is these things that are, that are trying to enslave us today. That worry, that anxiety, that stress, that troubled conscience are trying to take away the freedom that comes from Jesus Christ. Called to be God's children, we want to serve and obey, yet we are fallen, and we are bound to sin. We can't ignore that sinfulness in our lives. But neither is there no hope. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, Jesus says. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We do not always see that each of us suffers from a weariness or a weakness in some way. That we all bear burdens laid on us 
by others. We bear blame that we heap on ourselves because of our own sin. But it is Christ who lifts those burdens and takes that blame from us. It is Christ who took that to the cross. And now he invites us to come to him. Because now his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He helps us to put the present reality in perspective. He gives us our spiritual freedom. He gives us rest for our souls. Yes, today is a day to celebrate your freedom once again in Christ over sin and death. Rest for the soul and peace of mind only come in coming to Jesus. Because all things, all things have been handed over to him. And only Jesus has that power to bring peace to a troubled conscience. Only he has the power to reveal God and his love and his mercy to those he chooses. And he has won our rest by taking on our burdens. He has claimed peace and rest through his resurrection. And this rest means living in confidence in the love that God has for you, his children. Amen. Now the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus this day. Amen.